Before we start talking about the accounting equation, let's talk about something that's related to the accounting equation. The list of richest people in the world. Here are the current top two. So Jeff Bezos of Amazon is currently the richest at $195 billion. So what is an $195 billion called? It's called net worth. So how do you think they calculate net worth? It's actually pretty simple. You take the stuff that they own minus the stuff that they owe. Now later we'll find out what the accounting vocabulary is for stuff they own and stuff they owe. Anyway, if you take the stuff they own and subtract the stuff they owe, that equals net worth. For example, maybe Jeff Bezos owns $200 billion of stuff and maybe he owes $5 billion to the bank. We do the math and 200 billion minus 5 billion equals a net worth of 195 billion. Now maybe Bill Gates owns more stuff than Bezos. Let's say he has $221 billion of stuff that he owns. So he owns considerably more than Bezos, but he must owe a lot. In fact, he must owe 100 billion. Now I made up the 221 billion amount and the 100 billion amount, but the net worth is real as of today. So when we do the math, 221 billion minus 100 billion gives Bill Gates a net worth of 121 billion. So what really matters is not how much stuff you own, but what your net worth is, at least as far as this list is concerned. The same goes for businesses. Many businesses own a lot of stuff, but they also owe a lot of money. Now, accountants decided they can't use the terms stuff they own and stuff they owe. It doesn't sound very sophisticated. Accountants needed to come up with some vocabulary terms for these things so that they sounded smart. So instead of saying stuff they own, they called it assets. And that's a very important term that you know, assets. There, they sound smarter and more sophisticated now. Accountants were on a roll, so instead of saying stuff they owe, they decided to call it liabilities. So the official formula for net worth is assets minus liabilities equals net worth. So let's get some practice. Now, if you're like me, working with numbers in the billions is not something that I can relate to. It probably surprises you, but not many accounting professors are billionaires. But you don't have to be rich to use the net worth formula. Everyone can use it for their own situation. So let's do a couple of examples. Let's say Sophia is a college student. To keep it simple, let's say she only owns one thing, a $4,000 car. But she only has one car payment left, so her liabilities are $200. So what is her net worth? Well, $4,000 minus $200 equals a net worth of $3,800. Not bad. Now let's compare her net worth to another college student. His name is Richie Rich. Richie owns a $300,000 Lamborghini. Wow, pretty impressive. But Richie did not factor in the expense of car insurance and the costly repairs on his Lamborghini. In fact, his finances are a mess because he owes $350,000. So what is Richie Rich's net worth? $300,000 minus $350,000 means he has a negative net worth of $50,000. Not good. Often in the accounting world, negative numbers are put in parentheses. I prefer using a negative sign myself, but I use parentheses here to get you used to the concept. So despite having a ridiculously expensive car, Richie Rich is in financial trouble. 
he could take some finance tips from Sophia. And in the business world, you'll find this too. Some businesses have a lot of assets, but they have a lot of liabilities. So the net worth of a business is really important to look at. Now we'll introduce a new term, equity. For the average person, the term equity is used when talking about houses. So, Sophia has graduated from college and she has a good job. She also just bought a house. And she asks you how much equity she has in her house. Well, equity is just a fancy term for net worth. So the formula for equity is simply assets minus liabilities equals equity. Just so you know, we are getting closer to the official accounting equation, but I wanted to give you these real world examples to explain it. So to calculate the equity that Sophia has in her house, we have to ask her how much it's worth. She tells you it's worth $200,000. Now, because we're only calculating the equity she has in her house, we'll ignore her other assets like her car. So all we need to do to calculate the equity she has in the house is to ask her how much liability she has on her house. Because we only want to know the equity she has in the house, we'll ignore any other liabilities Sophia has, like her car loan. In other words, we're going to ask her, how much is a loan on the house? Sophia says she owes $170,000 on her house. So her equity is $200,000 minus $170,000 of liabilities gives her an equity of $30,000. Richie Rich is probably jealous of her. So accountants were not quite satisfied with the final accounting equation being assets minus liabilities equal equity. Accountants like things to be organized and they like their numbers to balance. So they made one final change to the formula. They said if $200,000 minus $170,000 equals $30,000, couldn't you rearrange things just a little bit like this? $200,000 equals $170,000 plus $30,000. Do you see the slight change? Instead of subtracting liabilities from assets, you add liabilities to equity. Notice both formulas are true. $200,000 minus $170,000 does equal $30,000. And $200,000 does equal $170,000 plus $30,000. So both formulas are true, but accountants decided to formally make their accounting equation Assets equals liabilities plus equity because the number on the left of the equal sign, $200,000, is the same as the number on the right side of the equal sign, $200,000. So both sides balance and accountants were happy. Since this is a class for learning accounting for businesses, let's look at the accounting equation for businesses instead of individuals. The official and final accounting equation is, drum roll please, assets, which is just stuff the business owns, equals liabilities, which is just stuff the business owes, like loans, plus owner's equity. You can also just call it equity, but whose equity is it? Since we're talking about businesses, it's the equity of the owner of the business, which is why they oftentimes call it owner's equity. So what is owner's equity? It's simply assets minus liabilities. Now let's say a business has $400,000 of assets, and it has $100,000 of liabilities. How much is the owner's equity? Can you do the simple math? What plus $100,000 equals $400,000? Well, owner's equity must be $300,000.
And another way to explain equity is it's the amount of assets that the owner owns. In this case, of the $400,000 of assets, the owner owns $300,000 and the bank owns the rest, $100,000, which is the amount of liabilities. So there you have it. The final accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Now it's critical to understand this accounting equation. Everything in accounting is based on this simple equation. It all comes back to assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So let's summarize the accounting equation. There are three ways that you can express the accounting equation. The official way is assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. But let's say you were given assets and liabilities. Can you figure out owner's equity? Yeah, you just change the equation around just a little bit. Assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. And you could also express it in the third way, assets minus owner's equity equals liabilities. And then finally, another way to think of the accounting equation, assets minus liabilities equals net worth. Students usually can kind of figure out equity as being the same as net worth, because net worth is relatively easy to understand. So you can think of equity as being the net worth of the business. So let's do a little self quiz here. We've got three different independent scenarios. Notice the accounting equation is at the top. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So we are given two of the numbers and we have to find the third. So technically you'll be using algebra to find the missing variable. And most of us can just do this in our head. So in scenario A, the company has $19,000 of assets and they have owner's equity of $4,000. So what are liabilities? That must be 15,000. B is super simple. We don't know the assets, but we know liabilities are 6,000 and owner's equity is 10,000. So assets must be 16,000. And then finally, in scenario three, or excuse me, scenario C, a company owns $13,000 of assets. They owe $2,000. In other words, their liabilities are $2,000. So how much is equity? Well, $13,000 minus 2,000 equals an equity of $11,000. You can also think of that $11,000 as that is the net worth of the business. It's also another way to say that is $11,000 is the amount of the assets that the owner owns.